good guys welcome back to the milk carton series i'm your host stephanie if you are new to the channel don't forget to like and subscribe so you can join our family so guys today's video was highly requested and i'm actually really glad that i decided to take a look into this case now you guys know i have tried to do my very best i am not a professional but i do what i can most important thing about this series is that we spread awareness and that is all i want to do so let's continue. So today guys, we're gonna be talking about 28 year old Alfred Wright. He is from Jasper, Texas. And this story is truly one of the ones that, I think I say this in every video, but I feel like every time I encounter a story, I feel like I don't think things could get any worse. And then when I read the story, I'm like, oh my God, like, I don't know, having a heart being, um, a passionate individual, you know, you come across these cases and it's just like, what the world? And I say that because when Alfred was found, his throat was slit, his ear, one of his ear loops was cut off, his, some of his teeth were missing and it was reported that he was just mutated. And so this story is one of the ones where it's like, what happened and it's bad enough because medical examiners classified his death as accidental so we're going to take a look into this case and we're going to talk about it and i would love to hear your opinion and again i will do my very best to give the information that is provided and as always links will be linked down below so you can check them out because i like to report as accurately as i can so on november 7 2013 Alfred was on his way to a patient. He was a physical therapist who would travel to his patients here and there. So on that night, he ended up having his truck over. He ended up parking at a local grocery store in Hempfield. And as he was there, he called his wife. Called his wife, you know how that typical is. Hey, my car broke down. I need someone to come pick me up. And in this time, the local clerk that worked at the grocery store stated she seen Alfred sprint up the highway. And so about an hour later, his parents come because his two children were sick. And so the wife needed to stay there. So she called his parents to come pick him up. But when they get there, they do not see Alfred at all. They only see his vehicle. And that was pretty much it when it came to that grocery store. Officials found some of his clothing located in a local field and some of it was tangled in barbed wire. And you know that hard mess. If you've ever been on a farm, you know, a lot of people have that on their fences and stuff. So if their animals try to, you know, come in and out. I know that because your girl used to be on the farm. Dogs that were on this search lost the scent of Alfred. But this is where it begins to get crazy. Alfred went missing on a Thursday and the search was called off by Monday. And many in the town, including his family and friends, were really baffled because it was like they didn't even take the initiative to search for Alfred at all. It was like you searched for him, but you really didn't search for him. And the sheriff claims that the search would continue even though it was called off. Later, the sheriff had little to say about the disappearance of Alfred. And that's what and that's when this case like honestly begins to take like this complete 360. So his family begins to kind of reach out and a lot of the volunteers were being turned away. No answers were being, no, no questions were being answered. And it was as if that the local sheriff department really could give two Fs about the disappearance or what had happened to Alfred. And a lot of it stemmed from that a lot of the volunteers were, felt like it was kind of racist because a lot of the law enforcement would basically say like, you're wearing the wrong clothing. It was like they were kind of picking and choosing when it came to some of the volunteers assisting in this search. And as bad enough as your loved one is, missing. Local cop basically joked that he probably was laying low on a beach somewhere. And it's bad enough that you're looking for your loved one. No one has time for jokes. Whether you think that's funny or not, and whether you think that he wanted to run away, that that's not the time nor the place, especially in a first weekend of someone going missing. Despite the circumstances in the disappearance of Alfred, as far as his clothes and his vehicle and everything else, 
The sheriff basically said that he does not believe there's any foul play in the disappearance of Alfred. Then again, it gets even more nuts. I mean, what else is new, right? Alfred's vehicle wasn't even searched. His family wasn't even questioned on the disappearance of him or friends. So it's like, did you even really care that this man was missing? A 28 year old black man was missing. 18th day of Alfred's disappearance, family and friends decided to take it upon themselves to go and search for him. Even went on private lands in which law enforcement claims was already searched. Three hours into the search, going through mud, creeks, bushes, everything that you can possibly imagine. A One of the volunteers begins to describe how there was like a strong odor coming from somewhere. In a ditch, about to his right, he sees a man laying face down to his underwear, shoes, and one sock. It was ashy gray as if it was white. The neck was also discolored in which He's in which he claims that it was kind of like a dark brute. And also the left ear was gone. That's when he begins on the walkie talkie to tell all the other volunteers that they had found a body. Alfred's father began to look at the body and he knew instantly that it was his son because his son had a tattoo on him that he knew. His father began to blurt out, they killed my boy, they killed my boy. And sadly in this town, it's kind of like a, what do you call it? A stigma because someone else went missing and was killed in this town as well. Not only that, the town was heavily involved in a lot of supremacists. Of course, the N-word was thrown around a lot. Once they found Alfred's body, they then began to call 911. It came about 30 minutes to an hour to the place. They began to scan the area wanted to take the body to a local funeral home, but Alfred's father basically said, no, we're gonna wait for a Texas Ranger to come. When one of the Texas Rangers comes, Alfred's dad basically says, no, we need another Texas Ranger. And this was because this Texas Ranger and the sheriff basically had a relationship and he felt like the sheriff already didn't care about my son, so why in the world would this Texas Ranger even give two shits about my son as well? And it was kind of like, you know, in, you're in cahoots. Next Texas Ranger wasn't close to the town, so Alfred's father basically stayed with his son's body because he didn't want anything to happen and he wanted this to be resolved with a new Texas Ranger. And he also, his father also had three other men assist him. And, you know, and in that moment, they begin to just talk about Alfred. And you know how you do when a loved one passes away. You talk about all the good memories of this individual and you try to bring some light into such a dark place. And they basically talked about how he was a high school football star. He was very modest. And he basically had took this new job traveling for physical therapy and just basically raising his children and, his, and being with his wife. I said previously, this town has been known for some things because, because in 1998, James Bird was murdered by three white men. James basically accepted a ride from three white men. And what they did is they brutally beat him, tortured him, chained him to a truck and dragged him for over three miles. So the town of Jasper was not new to anything of this correlation. So the ranger arrives the next day and the dad, he basically shows him where his son's body is. In January, the autopsy was released. And this is where the autopsy basically stated that it was an accidental overdose. And it also did state that he was missing eyes and some nails off his fingers. They ruled this to associate with wildlife and animals. So they didn't rule it as like being tortured by a human being. And they also basically, like I said previously, they said that he overdosed on cocaine. So this case was picked up by CNN and this is where a lot of different things started to come out. Rumors that he was having an affair with the sheriff's daughter. There were like hotel receipts. And this is what led a lot of people to believe maybe he was killed because he was dating a white girl, you know, the sheriff's white daughter. But that's crazy to me because his wife looks 
like she's white. So, but again, you're living in these towns and you're living in towns where a lot of people don't necessarily approve of a black man dating a white girl. That's just a fact. And after the CNN story, Alfred's younger brother, Savion, was actually a contestant on American Idol. So it kind of like sparked another intensity into this case a little bit because he was on there and he dedicated a song to his brother. I didn't know that. That's so crazy. I don't even watch American Idol though. So yeah, I used to back in the day, but I didn't watch it like after Kelly Clarkson and Ruben Stutter. I forgot to mention the family did get a second autopsy done. And this autopsy reported basically stated that there was a high indication of a homicide. Even odd in this case, as I was reading some more, <clears throat> the Wright family basically stated that the sheriff had seen Alfred the night that he went missing. You know, he basically stated that he went to go buy a pack of beer. He basically had seen Alfred calling on the phone around that time frame. We, his mom, Alfred's mom basically said like, it was truly strange to him to like, so you seen him, a young black man, stranded, and it was like you didn't even do anything to assist or help. In December of 2014, a 28-year-old man by the name of Shane Dwayne Hadnot was arrest arrested for the possession to distribute cocaine. A lot of the people in the town, family and friends, basically said that Hadnot was an ex a scapegoat for the murder of Alfred Wright. Basically, they're saying that the reason Alfred died was because of the drugs that he gave to Alfred. So in the court proceeding, text messages were shown to that Alfred and Shane were texting about getting getting and receiving drugs. Of course, his family does not believe that was the, the reason that he was killed. Um, and pretty much so, Shane was just a scapegoat because he gave Alfred the drugs. And regardless or not, it's like, I, I don't know how you can get a slash of a throat, your ear cut off, your tongue cut out, your, you don't have no clothes on. How in the hell is that an accidental death? I'm still tripping off of that. Like, okay, he, he has the drugs. Cool, we got that, right? But what about this other stuff? Because that don't make sense to me. I did not say this previously, but their family did hire a private investigator. I kind of just like was going through all the facts, but nonetheless, the family did hire a private investigator to help resolve this case. And that's how they found out about the affair and which she declines, of course, but that's how they found out some of this other key information. I did want to mention that. So if you're in the comments about to get me, that's why. <laughs> but nonetheless, the family still holds tight to their feelings and they have continued to be a voice for black victims, especially being killed in this type of manner. So I feel like this case is a true cover up. Um, it doesn't it just it's just too much surrounding this case to make me believe that he was he was he died from accidental overdose because of all the other key elements in this case and the second autopsy wasn't truly revealed it just only it compared to the first one yes he did have drugs in his system but at the same time the first autopsy didn't really go into correlation with the trauma that he 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 was held with so to me, it's like something's covering up, someone knows something, and this man was brutally killed. And it was just a cover up for other issues. You know, it doesn't make it right. And I'm just truly saddened by this because I never heard of this case. I really did not, like that's crazy to me. And to see that it be CNN and all of that, it's just like, wow, like, do people not care for human life? like? And I often wonder when I'm reading these stories, especially about black people, it's like, what did we do for people to hate us this bad? Because we're like, what you want me to do? Take it off? Like, I don't know what more you can do. But nonetheless, that is the story of 28 year old Alfred Wright. He was brutally killed and his story needs to be heard. And hopefully one day, 
his family will truly get the answers that they seek. And I don't feel like Shane should be the only one involved for, should be the only one convicted of this crime. So that's the story of Alfred Wright. Um, it's truly sad that we live in a world as such, but I mean, look what's continuing to happening in this world. So guys, until the next story, I will see you 